All right, this is quiz review 12, and there's a little bit of unit circle on it and a little bit of um, right triangle trig stuff. So let's take a look at this and let's see if we can get this to work for us. Okay, so first of all, number one, it says convert the following angle into radian mode. So number one, we're going to have 205 degrees over 180 pi. And the conversion is to take theta times pi over 180. And that's really what I'm doing right here. So nice thing about having fancy calculators is my fancy calculators can reduce this fraction for me. So if I do my 205, let's see if this 205 out of 180. And in the math, there's a fraction button. Isn't that cool? Reduces it for me all the way down to 4136 pi. I like that button. Now, number two, I'm not going to be able to keep it in terms of pi because it's got minutes, degrees, and minutes. So if you look at number two, you've got 414 degrees and 36 minutes. So I'm probably going to get a decimal answer. It's okay, I can do that. So first, let's take 36 out of 60, and we'll convert that into a decimal. So 36 over 60, I don't know, 36 out of 60, I think it's 0.6, but we confirm that, yeah, 0.6. So we'll change this 36 minutes into 0.6. 6 as a decimal. So 414.6 times my pi over 180, okay? Um, and we're just going to get a decimal answer, which is okay because most radians are in terms of decimals anyway. So 414.6 pi divided by 180, and I can answer about 7.2, we'll round it to 7.24. 7.24, and that's radians. Okay, that is an angle. So it's also an arc length. Uh, we're going to leave it in terms of 7.24 radians. Okay. Then number three, we're going to go just the opposite. We've got three pi eights. And we're going to multiply that times 180 over pi because our conversion is to take 180 over pi times what a radian you have, and that'll change it to some degree. Okay. So in this case, it's easy. The pi's will cancel, and I'll use my calculator. Just to go 3 times 180 divided by 8, and I can answer about 67 and a half degrees. 67 degrees and 30 minutes, or 67.5 degrees. Either one. Kind of like the 30 degrees, 30 minutes, but that's still, it'll work. Okay, now at number 4, we've got 5.5 um, radians. We're going to put that into degrees and minutes. So we're going to take our conversion. We're going to take that and multiply that times 180 over pi, okay? So let's see what we get. We're going to go ahead and go 5.5 times 180 divided by pi, and we get an answer of about 315.12, whoops, 0.1267, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I know for sure my answer is 315 degrees, but this. 0.2 blah 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 blah. We're just going to take that and multiply it times that and multiply it times 60. So watch on the calculator. I'll subtract out my 315. And I'm just left with the decimal. Multiply that times 60 to convert it to minutes and I get about 7.6. So my answer is going to be a 315 degrees and about 7.6 minutes. Let's move on. Number five. Now, I don't have you in a circle in front of me because I let mine out to one of you guys and never got it back. So we'll just have to look at the board while I do this, okay? So number five. I'm going to go cosine inverse of one half. And we want our answers in radians, okay, in terms of pi. So whenever you see this symbol right here, we're finding the angle. We want the angle. And for us, our angles in terms of rad or in terms of pi. So we go to one half on the inner circle. So we're looking for one half for uh, x value, and it's at pi thirds. So my angle is just pi thirds. That's all I gotta do. We should be getting pretty good at the inner circle by now. Number six, we have sine inverse of a negative square root of three over two. Again, it's a y value, but this one's found in quadrant four, okay? So negative square root of three over two is found at 300 degrees or 5 pi thirds. We really have to 
call it negative pi thirds because the closest way to get down to it, right, it's right down here, is to just go down to it. So my angle is negative pi thirds. Okay, don't miss that, okay? You don't want to go all the way around the circle to get to it. You want to go down to it to find it so it's negative pi thirds. Okay, seven. Arc tangent. Well, it's the same thing. Arc tan is the same thing as tan inverse. The only difference is the question. The answer is going to be the same. The question is saying, well, what's the arc length? But in the unit circle, the arc length and the angle happen the same thing. So if I find tangent negative one, my tangents are on the outside of the circle. They're in pink. Um, it's about 315 degrees, but that would be going the wrong direction. We want to go down to it, so it's really down here. So I want to go down to it, and that's going to be negative pi force as an angle. Okay? Go the easiest way. Okay, number eight, cotangent. Cotangent inverse. So cotangent is not on the circle. So cotangent of one is asking the same question, saying, okay, cotangent of some angle equals one. Well, we don't have cotangent on our unit circle. We have tangent. Cotangent is the same thing as one over tangent. So what I'm going to do is just make that one over one, just flip it. And so I'm really looking for tangent of some angle equals one, and of course that's going to happen at pi force, 45 degrees or pi force, but we're going to just call it pi force. Number nine, sine inverse of negative one half. Negative one half. Okay, again, we're going to find that in quadrant four. All right, so sine inverse of negative one half is a y value, and it's at 11 pi 6, 330 degrees, or you know, if you look at it, let's go down to it. Let's really call it um, negative pi 6. So theta is negative pi 6. All right, 10. Let's get 10 done. Okay, cosecant. We've got cosecant inverse of 2. Cosecant's not on a unit circle. I'm going to rename it. I'm going to rename it as 1 over sine inverse of 2. But what we're going to do is flip it and take it as sine inverse of a 1 half. All right? It basically is saying that um, you have cosecant of some angle equals 2, which is the same thing as sine of some angle equals one half because you flip that. Of course that happens at pi six, so my angle is just pi six. Okay. Alright, that's the unit circle stuff. So let's take a look at eleven. Alright. So eleven's really not that bad, but what I want to do is probably draw a little triangle real quick on eleven. So it says find the secant of a sine inverse of three-fifths. Okay, now remember, this symbol means angle. So let me set up a triangle. So I've got an angle here, and I know a sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this is three, and this is five. And hopefully you guys know by Pythagorean's theorem, this is going to be four. I mean, you know, if you go, you know, a squared plus three squared equals five squared, you'll wind up with a to be four. Okay, now if you need the secant, secant's the opposite of cosine. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so secant's got to be just the opposite. Instead of adjacent over hypotenuse, it's going to be my hypotenuse over my adjacent. Well, that's going to be my 4, my 5, so my hypotenuse is 5, and my adjacent is 4. So we're going to say it's just 5 over 4. So again, built a triangle, found all three sides by Pythagorean's theorem. I looked at secant, knew it was the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine's adjacent over hypotenuse, so I made secant hypotenuse over adjacent. There it is. Just set it up. 5 over 4. Okay, 12. All right, let's see what we got. So, we've got a discus ring, all right? So let's just draw a picture. We've got a discus ring, and we've got the rate, the diameter is 4.5 feet. 4.5 feet, and throwing angle for the discus is 44 degrees. Now, if we want to find the arc length, that's that right there. We're going to go S is equal to theta over 180 times pi r. All right? So that's easy. We're just going to take S, which is the arc length, this theta, which is, that's our formula, 44 
over 180 pi times the radius. Now the right radius has got to be a 2.25, right? 2.25 times 2.25. Use my calculator. So we got, so clear all that. 44 divided by 180 times pi times 2.25. And I get an answer about 1.73 feet for the arc length. Now the area, to find the area, I'm just going to go and use theta over 360 pi r squared. Okay, because that's going to be the fraction of the circle. So we're going to go 44 over 360 pi times 2.25 squared. So I'll do that on my calculator. Okay, let's just go and take my... 44 divided by 360 times pi times 2.25 squared. You can answer about 1.94 feet squared. 1.94 feet squared. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at the fan, okay? How fast is this fan going? What's the speed of fan, okay? Okay, so angular speed. So first of all, 14. We've got a ceiling fan, and the fan has a radius of 20 inches. It rotates 15 RPM. So that's 15 revolutions per minute, right? Revolutions per minute, okay? So the angular speed. In seconds. So first of all, in seconds. So first, let's think how far it's going. Okay, within one minute, it's going to go around 15 times in a minute. Okay, so it's just going to do two pi, which is its full revolution. In so we're going to go 15 times two pi because that's going to be how many times it goes around the circle. That's our angular one full revolution. That's its angular velocity, which just gives us a 30 pi. Okay, but that's re that's in terms of minutes is what's the, how many times it goes around the circle in one minute so oh, if we want that in seconds right it's going to go and do quite a few of them in per second um, so if we divide this by 60 right because there's 60 seconds in a minute we end up getting pi half so it rotates pi halves per second so every seconds go pi halves pi half so that's our angular speed now, if we want a linear speed, it's kind of like this. Say you are on, basically, if you're a, a speck or a bug on the tip of the, of the fan, you'd be flying around, okay? So, let's figure out circumference, okay? So, the circumference of the circle is pi r, 2 pi r, sorry, my bad, 2 pi r. And that would tell me the length or how far we'd go. So, the circumference in this case is going to be 2 times 15 times pi which is 30, okay? So the circumference, so circumference is going to be 30 pi. And you're going to do that, you're going to go around that thing in 30 pi, right? That's your angle. So you're going to multiply that by 30 pi. And that's how fast you're going in terms of minutes. So that's pretty fast in terms of minutes. Um, that's going to be a 900 pi. But if you want in terms of seconds, we're just going to divide that by 60. And what is that? Let's see, 900 divided by 60, and I get about 15 pi, and that would be in terms of inches per second, inches per second. That's a speed. That's how fast a little bug would be flying around that fan. It's pretty fast. Okay, so let's keep moving on. We've got then 16, right? Triangle trig. That's the easy stuff, okay? This should be easy. Hopefully everybody will agree that this is the easy stuff. Make sure you're, degree, you're in degree mode before I do anything mode. Yep, degree mode. It's got to be in degree mode because we're doing right triangle trig. So 16, but my favorite triangle, triangle PIG. Angle P, angle I, angle G, 4, 6. But we don't know any angles, okay? So... Gosh, let's see. First of all, I suppose the easiest thing to find would be a little g by Pythagoras' theorem, which is, okay, well, g squared plus 6 squared. Oops, I'm bad. I can't believe I did that. 
How about 4 squared plus 6 squared equals g squared? That's better. 16 plus 36 equals g squared. What's that? 52, probably. 16 plus 36, 52. So 52, we're going to take the square root of 52 for g. Square root. That answer, about 7.2. So little g is about 7.2. Okay, got it. Um, how about angle i? So if I want to find angle i, I'm going to set up opposite adjacent, right? Opposite adjacent, which means it's got to be tangent. Take a look up above me. So we're going to go tangent of angle i is equal to my opposite over my adjacent, or my 4 over 6. I've got to use my inverse button because I really have to do tangent inverse of 4 over 6. Tan inverse of 4 divided by 6. And I get an answer about, oh, 33.7 degrees. So angle I, 33.7 degrees, 33.7 degrees. Okay, easy. Now if I want angle P, these two angles are complementary, meaning that they have to add up to 90. So let's go 90 minus 33.7 degrees, and that's going to give me angle P. 90 minus 33.7, I can answer 56.3 degrees. Okay, there we go, there we go, there we go. Okay. All right, turn the page. Turn the page. Number 17. Let's see what we got. 17. Okay, give them the right triangle. Find the missing sides. Okay, I can do that. Um, angle A, T, C, triangle cat. This is 20, this is 66 degrees. Okay, so here's a little a, here's a little c. I guess the easiest thing to find is angle A, or angle, that's 66, angle C. Angle C is just going to be 90 minus 66. That's the easy one, right? And that's going to be 24 degrees. So angle C is 24 degrees. That was easy. Just track from mighty. Um, let's see. How about if I find angle or side C? So again, the steps are pick an angle to work with, pick a side to solve for, use the given side. So from the angle, that's my opposite. That's my hypotenuse, right? Opposite hypotenuse. Set it up. It's going to be sine. Sine of 66 is equal to A over 20. I multiply up the 20, put it right there, have 20 times the sine of 66 equals little a. Just use my calculator. Degree mode, of course, 20 times the sine of 66, and I get an answer about 18.3. 18.3, probably centimeters, right, is little a. Okay. So then you got two choices, either Pythagorean's theorem, to find little c or just use right triangle trig again. I'm just going to use trig. Believe it or not, it's faster. I'm going to use cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. So again, you could use Pythagorean's theorem to get it, but I'm just going to go, all right, cosine 66 is equal to my adjacent, which is little a, over my hypotenuse, which is 20. All right, so 20 times my cosine of 66, and I get an answer of about 8.13. Because I multiplied up the 20, right? 20 cosine 66, and I used my calculator, about 8.1. 8.1 for little a. And again, if you had used Pythagorean's theorem, you would have got the same answer. I just think it's easier to do it that way. Okay, we're getting there, aren't we? Number 18. Let's draw a picture. Okay, we've got an isosceles triangle. Let's try that out. And I need to find the area on the perimeter. The vertex angle is 68 degrees. I know this side's equal to this side. And a base of 10. The nice thing about an isosceles triangle, and I did not draw this very well, but it really does make a perfect, I can cut it straight down the middle. And <laughs> it doesn't look like it, but this triangle is going to be equal to that triangle. Bad, bad picture. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so if I take a look at just well, just this part of it right here, okay, and then this would be, have to be 5, 
and 34 degrees and that's gonna be 90 because it's a nice sausage triangle. I cut it right down the middle. So what do I know? If I need to find the perimeter and the area, I need to find both this side, the hypotenuse, and the altitude. I need to find both. Okay, so first, oh maybe I'll find the altitude. Okay, so let's call that A for the altitude so I can find the area. So opposite, adjacent, I'm gonna use tangent. I'm gonna look tangent of um, 34 is equal to my 5 over my a. So we can't divide by a, so if a comes up here, you multiply by a, then you can divide by that. If you get a tan of 34 equals 5, you can't do that. But tan of 34 is really a number. Just divide by that, so a is going to be 5 divided by tan of 34. Let's check that out, okay? 5 divided by tangent. 34, and I get an answer about 7.4, okay? So a little a, or the altitude is 7.4, okay? Now, let's see if I can find the hypotenuse, because that'll help me get the perimeter. So let's call that just h, and opposite over hypotenuse, I'm gonna use sine. So I'll go over here, I'll use sine of 34 is equal to five over h, opposite over hypotenuse. And again, same thing, I'm going to have to divide, multiply it up and divide, so h is really equal to, so the h comes up here, then you divide, okay? So h comes up here, then you divide by sine of 34. So it's really 5 divided by sine of 34, and I'll put that on my calculator, I'll go 5 divided by sine 34, get an answer about, oh, 8.94. 8.94. Okay, now perimeter is easy and area is easy. Okay, let's do first of all perimeter. Let's go to this thing. Okay, so if this is 8.94, this is 8.94, and that's 10. So perimeter is going to be 8.94 plus an 8.94 plus 10. All right, calculator time. 2 times 8.94 plus 10. Ah, uh, 27.88, approximately. So the perimeter is approximately equal to 27.88, and that's in terms of centimeters. Area, base times height, divided by 2. Or we got another little formula, which actually makes it kind of easy. I guess I didn't need to find the altitude. Could have gone the 1 half side side sine. Let's do that one. Let's go 1 half, 8.94 times... 8.94 times the sine of 68 degrees. Squeeze it all in there, sorry about that. So 0.5 times 8.94 squared times the sine of 68. It's about 37.05, 37.05 centimeters squared. Or yeah, 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 you could have done 1 half 10 times 7.4, and you got the same answer. I just want to try the other formula. Same thing. Okay, we're almost there. All right, almost there. Okay, pull away 18. Let's take a look at 19. Okay, 19. So a five-foot boy sights to the top of a tree an angle of elevation of 70 degrees. If he is 25 feet from the tree, what is the height of the tree? So let's draw a picture, okay? So here's my boy. He sights tree. Here's my tree. This is really drawn poorly because that is not 70 degrees, but use your imagination, okay? Here's the thing. We're going to find the tree from here to here, right? We're going to get this height from here to here, but then we're going to have to add in the boy's height because he is suspended five feet above. He's 25 feet from the tree. Okay, this gets pretty easy. Opposite, adjacent. We're going to assume the tree grows at a 90 degree angle. Opposite, adjacent, we're just going to use um, tangent. Tangent of 70 equals t over 25. Multiply up the 25. Tangent of 70, right? Multiply that right there. Equals t. Use my calculator. 25 times tangent of 70. And I get about a 68.7. I guess that's in terms of feet, isn't it? Yep. And then I'm going to add in the 
five because this triangle is really suspended five feet above because he sights it from his eyeball. So we add in five, we end up with an answer about 73.7 feet. Okay, there it is. Almost done. Number 20. All right, 20. So a submarine takes a dive that at, is at a rate of 200 meters per minute vertically down to 1300 meters per minute horizontal with the surface. What the heck does that mean? Well, let's draw a picture. Here's my water. Here's my submarine heading down, right? Here's my submarine. We'll picture my submarine. Beep. Beep. There's my submarine just cruising along. Put some missiles, some full ports. So here's what's going on. It's diving vertically down at 13,000. Oh, I got that wrong. He's diving down at a rate of 2,000 meters per minute, vertically down. Okay, the 2,000 here. I should read this better. Um, to a 13,000 meters per horizontal. So here's my 13,000, okay? So we need the angle of depression, which is this angle here. Okay, so it's he's diving, he's vertically driving at a rate of 2,000 feet per minute as he cruises along horizontally at 13,000 on the horizontal feet per minute. So all we need is the angle, and just think of these in terms of numbers. It doesn't really matter where he is. So opposite over adjacent, we're going to assume that's a right angle. <laughs> yeah, right. But the sea level, if it's calm, that would be a right angle. So tangent, opposite over adjacent. Tangent of theta equals 2,000 over 13,000. And I'm going to do the tangent inverse of my cancel, cancel, um, cancel 2 thirteenths, right? So tan inverse 2 divided by 13. And I get an angle about 8. 0.7 degrees, which makes sense because if the angle's too steep, then this poor sailor is going to be falling over. Okay, that's it. I'll get a quiz tomorrow. You guys need to make a note card and be ready to go. I'll be right back over.